Namaskaram everyone and welcome back in today's video. Have you ever wondered what it means to truly live with complete abandon? Well, you are in the right place because today we are diving deep into the art of living in total abandon. Is it all about letting go of fears, worries and restrictions to embrace life fully? Well, Sadhguru has some incredible insight to share on this topic and trust me, you won't want to miss a single word. Let's embark on this journey together and discover the true essence of living in total abundance. Let's dive in. I did not say I'm conscious. I'm in a crazy state of abandon and intoxication all the time. Just look at my eyes and see, I'm always stoned. Never touched a substance, but that's how I am, totally knocked out. So I didn't say I'm conscious, I was only telling you, you should be conscious <laughs> Because <laughs> there is… see, the nature of this life is such, you have only that which you abandon. The nature of life, even the phenomena around you is like this. For example, right now this looks black, not because it is black, simply because it's refusing to reflect light, that's why it looks black. This looks red, not because it's red. It holds back all the other dimensions of the color, reflecting only red. So what it throws out becomes its quality. This is the nature of existence here. What you try to be, you will not be that. What you just throw out, that becomes you, isn't it? If you throw money around, people think you're rich, yes? If you hold it, people think you're… maybe you don't have anything, isn't it? <laughs> so what comes out of you is what is yours, in a way. So when you say mind or being mindful, I do not know much about it, but I believe people are trying to think themselves into this moment. Be in the moment, be in the moment. Well, why are you trying to be in the moment? Be somewhere else and show me. Hello? Can you be somewhere else? No, you're anyway here, so why are you trying to be here? So what you're saying is, don't think. It took millions of years of evolution to get you to this level of cerebral capability. But now, you want to give it up. The two basic qualities which sets us apart from every other creature is, we have a very vivid sense of memory. Everything that happens, we remember. This is why our experiences become our knowledge. And we have a fantastic sense of imagination. We can imagine something which is not yet and work towards creating it. These are the only two things people are suffering. <laughs> These are only two things. What happened ten years ago, they can still suffer. This does not mean they're suffering life, they're suffering their memory. What may happen day after tomorrow, they're already suffering. This does not mean they're suffering life, they're just suffering their imagination. They're suffering their memory and imagination, two basic faculties which set us apart from every other creature. You are ruining evolutionary process, you want to go back. You want to go back because you looked at monkeys jumping around happily on the trees. So you think it is a better way to live, but evolution gone waste. This is a much bigger possibility. A possibility unrealized is always a big problem. Any possibility, if you don't realize what is the possibility and grasp it, all possibilities look like problems, isn't it? Right now that's a human problem. So, you don't have to be mindful, you should be mindless, really. Just… just… just be in some state of abandon and see how beautiful life becomes. Whether in work or song or dance or whatever the hell you do, just throw yourself into it for a moment. Without any sense of being mindful or conscious or unconscious or whatever, just see how wonderful life becomes. They are the most wonderful moments of your life, isn't it so? Where you were absent. Thank you very much. Today when I was uh, 
Sitting in the Samyama hall in the morning, there were some things that we had to attend to and uh, I was just about to write a note to someone saying tomorrow what to do. And I wrote one word tomorrow and this word tomorrow hit me so hard. So I wrote a small poem instead of a note, not to that person but to you. So this poem is called Tomorrow. A day that never came, but has managed to spoil every game. A day that never came, but has managed to spoil every game. One day that takes all the blame, the basis of all fear and shame, cripples the blossoming of the life's flame, a spoiler that makes life a dream, traps the limitless in a limited seam. One day that takes all the blame, the basis of all fear and shame, cripples the blossoming of life's flame, a spoiler that makes life a dream, traps the limitless in a limited seam, a day that never comes, but the world it rules. A day that never comes, but the world it rules. Tomorrow never happened to anybody, but the idea of tomorrow has robbed people, a huge mass of people of their life, just the idea. Nobody ever touched a tomorrow in their life, nobody ever experienced one. Nobody ever saw one, but just the idea completely robs people of everything that could be life. What shall we do for tomorrow's darshan? Oh, tomorrow when I come to darshan, I'll bring an umbrella. Darshan means to behold. You can only behold now, you can never behold tomorrow. Not because it's out of reach, because it doesn't exist. You can only imagine tomorrow, you will never behold tomorrow, never ever. But still, for most human beings, it is this idea an idea whose time will never come, it is that idea which drives most people's lives unfortunately. Even if you drive your life with an idea, even if you drive your life with an idea, you must drive with an idea whose time may come sometime. But this is an idea whose time will never come but it still drives people, it dr still drives most lives on the planet. That is why most lives on this planet are not lives, they are just bunch of thoughts, emotions, ideas and prejudices. Most lives are not a reality, they are just a psychological that's just a psychological existence. They're just a dream because reality happens now, reality happens here. In your mind, only a dream can happen and life and death will happen today. The dream is about tomorrow. It's better to dream of something that'll come true. Tomorrow is a dream that'll never come true. So, what you refer to as spiritual process, it's about knowing life. You can know life only today. You can know life only now. This is the moment. I'm not time to give you a teaching. 
When I said, this is the moment, oh Sadhguru said, this is the moment. It's not about that. This moment is not an idea, it is the only reality. This moment is not a teaching, it is the only living thing. It is the only living thing in the existence is right now, nothing else. So, don't try to understand it, don't try to digest it, you just have to behold it in all its entirety. Start with the rain, good way to begin. As we come to the end of this enlightening journey, let's take a moment to reflect on what we have learned today. Sadhguru's profound insight has reminded us that life is truly a beautiful gift, meant to be lived with abundance, not confined by the limitations of mindfulness. He has debunked the myth surrounding the popular mantra, live in the moment, empathizing instead the importance of fully immersing ourselves in the present reality. Let's remember that tomorrow is merely an idea a concept that only exists in our minds. The only reality we have is this very moment, the here and now. So let's take a deep breath and simply behold the beauty of the present moment. As we conclude, I encourage you to carry these teachings with you on your journey forward. Embrace the life with abundance. Let's go all the worries about the future and release in the beauty of each moment as it unfolds. Thank you for joining us today and until next time, may you continue to live your life to the fullest. Peace and blessing to all of you. Namaskaram.